Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fourth grade. I finally found a program that I think works very well for me to record this video. So today I'm going to be talking to you about electricity. So I encourage that you get the packet that you receive in the mail on electricity. By now you should have finished reading it and also answering the questions. So I'll just be going over it to clarify some of the things that are in the packet. Here are today's objectives. We're first going to read through the vocabulary so that we understand as we're talking through the slide what all these words mean. And then we're going to look at the first two pages of lesson one. So like I said, make sure that you have your packet with you and make sure that you have your pencil. As always, I encourage that you take note on the packet and not on a separate piece of paper. So I'm just going to switch screens. So we look at the vocabulary first. The first word that we have here is electrical charge. So that's one of two kinds of particles, positive or negative, that are in objects. So one thing that we're going to learn today is that all objects around us have positive and negative charges within them because they have something called atoms. We're going to talk a little about that. The next word here is static electricity, and that is the main focus of lesson one. Static electricity is a buildup of electrical charges on an object. The next term here is discharge. Discharge is a sudden movement of electrical charges from one object to another. Conductor, for us to have electricity in our house, in all our devices that we use, we need materials that we call conductors. These are materials that let electric charges flow through them easily. Insulator. We also do need insulators. This is how we make sure that we're not getting electric shock. So an insulator is a material that does not let electric charges flow through it easily. The next term, electric current. That's a flow of electrical charges through a material, such as a wire. And last but not least for today is circuit. For my electricity to flow, I'm going to just switch down here. You can see in my diagram, this is what is called a circuit. It is a path for an electric current. So for my electricity to flow and for my light bulb over here to be on, I need a source of uh, electrical charge, which is my battery. I need conducting wires. And then here I can also have a control, which usually in our houses on our devices is some kind of switch. And then of course, my device in this case here is my light bulb. I'm gonna switch over back to our PowerPoint. And we're gonna start lesson one static electricity now i have it here in powerpoint form but i also have my packet right next to me which is the same thing that you should have you should have your packet right next to you and a pencil static electricity so the first thing that we have to understand is that everything around us whether it's living or is non-living all of these things are made up of tiny particles Previously in class, we talked about cells. Within our cells, there's something called atoms. And then every other thing that is matter all around us also contains these atoms. Inside these atoms are tinier particles, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. We don't need to learn them in great detail. We just need to know there's a positive one represented by my plus sign, and there's a negative one represented by my minus sign. These tiny particles have charge. This is what I need for uh, to have electricity or to have um, that current in my wires. So there are two kinds of charge, positive and negative. For our exam, we do not need to know um, the different the atoms and that they have all these three different particles. All we need to know is that these are positive and there's a negative. 
So how do these particles behave? If you are following along on um, your packet, you would see that in the example that they have, they're showing different scenarios. So three different scenarios. In the first scenario, I have two positively charged particles next to each other. Now, when I have like particles next to each other, they tend to push each other away. And we call this uh, that they're repelling each other. So two positive charges next to each other, they push each other away. And as the arrows show here, they actually go different or opposite directions. The same thing with my negatively charged particles. They're going to repel each other. And therefore, as represented by my arrows over here, they're going uh, different directions or opposite directions. Now, when I have charges that are not the same, I have a positive here and I have a negative, you'll notice that my arrows flip, they actually move towards, towards each other and we call this an attraction. So oppositely charged particles actually attract each other. Like charged particles actually repel each other. So they push each other away. I'm moving on to page two. And we're gonna talk about how charges add up. So most objects will have the same number of positive charge as negative charge. So if I have five positively charged particles, I will have five negatively charged particles as well. And in this case, we say that this object is neutral. That means it's neither attracting or repelling anything because the charges do something. We say that they cancel out each other. So the positive and the negative charges cancel out each other because that means each of my charges in there, I could say, has a partner. Charge can move from one object to another. And as we see here depicted in the picture and even in our packet, we can see this when we put a balloon that has rubbed on wool next to somebody's hair. So negative charge tends to move more freely than positive charge. And then we're gonna look at the steps here in the next slide. So the first thing that the girl needs to do, because if you just have a balloon, like I said, that balloon will be neutral. So it's not uh, moving close to anything. It's not moving away um, from other objects. It's just kind of neutral. It's in a stationary position. So the girl first has to rub that neutral balloon on her wool sweater. So the little girl here in my picture can rub her balloon on her top as the girl in our packet will rub the balloon on her wool sweater. There's a movement of charge from the wall to the balloon. So what happens is that negative charge, which moves more freely than positive charge, will move from the wool sweater onto the balloon. Now the balloon has more negative charge than before. So if the balloon before had five negatively charged particles, five positively charged particles, now maybe it has 10 negatively charged particles and five positively charged particles. So there's sort of an imbalance in the object. So when she places her balloon near the hair, that negative charge in the balloon is what attracts the positive charge in the girl's hair. So the negative charge from the balloon attracts the positive charge in the girl's hair. And this is how we see the girl's hair almost uh, standing up in our picture in the packet. Or in this case here, you can see the little girl's hair is sticking to the balloons that she's holding in her hands. Let's do the quick check. On your paper, it says fill in each empty particle with a plus sign or a negative sign to show if the two particles attract, meaning they move towards each other, or repel, meaning they push each other away. 
let's look at the scenario here. For the first one, I have a positively charged particle. Which sign should I draw in the second particle to show that these particles are moving away from each other? For number two, I have a positively charged particle. The arrows in this scenario are pointed towards each other, showing that my particles are attracting or moving towards each other. So what is the appropriate sign that I must draw in the second particle? I'm going to give you a minute if you haven't done it yet. Draw the signs. This is how your drone should look. For the first one, you should have two positively charged particles. Remember, when the particles have the same charge, they're gonna push each other away. For the second one, you should have drawn a negative sign for the particle, because when I have two oppositely charged particles, they're gonna pull towards each other or attract. Let's look at the third question. Draw arrows in between these particles to show if these two are attracting, pulling towards each other, or repelling, pushing away from each other. If you haven't done it yet, I'll give you some seconds to draw those arrows. Remember, these have the same charge. So this is what your drawing should look like. Remember, when I have particles that have the same charge, whether they are both positively charged, shown by my plus sign, or both negatively charged, shown by my minus sign, the arrows should show that the particles are moving in opposite directions. So in this case, my arrows should be pointing away from each other. Great job, ladies. I look forward to seeing you in part two of this lesson.